So the main differences between the loanable amount is that Pag-ibig only has a maximum of 6 million for its loanable amount, whereas the bank doesn't really have a maximum amount. You can loan as much as you want as long as you satisfy the three conditions of the bank, which is the appraised value, the age, and the income. Hey guys, Alex here. Welcome back to my channel, a channel about real estate, personal finance, and business. In today's vlog, I will be sharing with you different, the differences between pag-ibig and bank financing and what are the pros and cons of both. Not everyone is capable of paying for their property purchase in cash. That's why private and government institutions offer housing loans to help buyers own their dream home. So when it comes to home loans, as I mentioned, there are two financing institutions that offer this. First is the bank, and then we also have pag-ibig fund, also known as Home Development Mutual Fund or HDMF. Now you may ask, what is the difference between these two loan institutions and which one should I go for? Well, in this video, I will be breaking down the differences between the two. Banks are owned by private corporations while Pag-ibig is backed by the government. So let's start with qualifications. How do you qualify for a loan? So let's go with Pag-ibig first. So in order to be qualified to get a loan at Pag-ibig, you first have to be a Pag-ibig member who has made 24 consecutive monthly payments. So if you need to get a loan now and you're not a member yet, don't worry. You can just pay a lump sum that is equal to 24 monthly payments. So since the minimum monthly contribution is 200 pesos, you just take that, multiply it by 24 months, so that's 4,800. So that means you have to pay the 4,800 up front. Another thing is that it should be no more than 65 years old on the date of the application and not more than 70 years old at loan maturity. So this means that if you got a loan at 65 years old, you cannot get a term of more than 5 years because of your age. So if you got a loan at 65, then the maximum term that you can get at Pag-ibig is 5 years since you should not be over 70 years old at loan maturity. Another qualification is that you have to pass the background and income credit investigation. Of course, since Pag-ibig is a loan institution, they have to make sure that you are qualified and able to pay for the home loan or the monthly mortgage. So they will check your background, they will check your income to see if you're capable of paying the monthly amortization for your loan. Next is you also have to be legally able to acquire a property in the Philippines. So that means you have to be of legal age and you have to be a Filipino citizen. So foreigners cannot get a loan here in the Philippines, whether it's via Pag-ibig or through bank financing. So it has to be, you have to be a Filipino citizen to get a loan here in our country. Another requirement is that you should have no bank or HDMF loan that has been foreclosed on. So if you bought a property and then the bank or either the bank or Pag-ibig foreclosed on your property, then you will no longer be eligible for a loan. So that's why you have to be very careful when applying for bank financing or Pag-ibig financing. You really have to check your income and your loan amount to make sure that you are fully capable of paying for your monthly mortgage since that is a long-term decision. Next is we go to bank loan requirements. So bank, the bank and Pag-ibig actually have similar requirements when it comes to eligibility, but there are small differences. Like for, for example, you have to be of legal age and not more than 65 years old at loan maturity. So same as with Pag-ibig, your bank will determine your loan term. Most banks have a maximum loan term of 20 years, whereas with Pag-ibig, they have a maximum loan term of 30 years. When it comes to loan terms though, Maybank is the only bank that I know that also gives a loan term of 30 years. For example, if you're already 50 years old right now and you want to know how how long or what the maximum, what your maximum loan term is, so you just deduct 65 less 50 equals 15. So this means you can have up to a 15 year loan term if you decide to get a loan at 50 years old. And then another qualification is you have to be a Filipino citizen. So same as with Pag-ibig, foreigners cannot get a loan here in the Philippines. Now, a common question that my clients ask me is what if I was born here in the Philippines, but then I migrated abroad and become, became a, like, a citizen of that country. So even though you're technically already a foreigner, you can still get a loan here in the Philippines, but the interest rate will be higher. So... 
a more cost-effective way for you to avail of the standard interest rates for home loans would be to apply for dual citizenship. And the third requirement for being eligible for a bank loan is you have to have a viable income source whether it's through employment or through business. So you just have to submit income documents to the bank so and then they will screen and review those documents to, to know if you are in fact eligible for the loan that you are applying for. So again, the main differences between the bank and Pag-ibig when it comes to qualifying for a loan are first is age limit. So when it comes to loan age limit, Pag-ibig give, Pag -ibig gives a higher limit at 70 years old compared to the bank which is at 65 years old. And then with Pag-ibig, you need to be a Pag-ibig member to avail of a Pag-ibig loan. But with bank financing, you don't even need to be a depositor at that bank to get a loan. You just need to prove that you are a qualified borrower. Okay, so next is we go to loan purpose. There are different types of home loans that you can avail with both bank and Pag-ibig. So first is home purchase. So with home purchase, the loanable amount is 80% of the appraised value. So home purchase means you want to buy a house or a townhouse. So the bank will or Pag-ibig will go to the property, appraise the property, and whatever is the appraised value, you can loan up to 80%. And then we also have lot or condo purchase. So with lot or condo, it will still be appraised, but the loanable amount is a little bit lower. It's only 70% of the appraised value. And then we also have construction loan. The loanable amount is 80% of the bill of materials. So you just need to have your architect or contractor submit a bill of materials to the bank, and then the bank will review it along with the costing, and then they will approve up to 80% of the amount of the bill of materials. Another loan that you can apply for is a home improvement loan. So if you have an existing home, you want to renovate it, then you can get a home improvement loan. Another type of mortgage that you can apply for is refinance mortgage. So let's say you already have a property which is already mortgaged at the bank. So if you've already paid for it for two years, then you can refinance on your mortgage. But again, you must have two years payment history with official mortgage and no history of default. So within the two years, you might, you just have to make sure that you pay regularly without any lapses so that you can be approved for a refinance mortgage. So now you must not confuse the appraisal value with the selling price because it is not the same thing. To get a property's appraised value, an appraiser from the bank or Pag-ibig, as I mentioned, will go to the property to appraise it. So the amount that they come up with is called the appraised value. And this is usually lower than the selling price unless the selling price is way below market value. So whatever is the appraised value, the, bar the borrower will then be able to loan 70 to 80%. So the difference between the selling price and the loanable amount is the equity, and this will be paid by the buyer to the seller in cash. Now let's go to interest rates. So what are the interest rates of the bank and Pag-ibig? Bank and Pag-ibig interest rates in the last few years were at 6 to 8% per annum for a five-year fixing period. Now, because of the pandemic, BSP has adjusted its interest rate, so they're now at an all-time low. So if you want to avail of a lower interest rate, then you can go with Pag-ibig because they currently have a lower interest rate than the bank. Now let's go to the loanable amount. So how much can you loan from the bank and from Pag-ibig? The minimum loanable amount for banks is 500000 This is why for socialized housing projects, where the loan amount is only 450000 the only financing option is Pag-ibig. Now, the maximum loanable amount for banks will depend on these three factors. First is age of the borrower. Again, the age of maturity for banks is 65 years old. Next is gross monthly income. So they will check the income of both spouses if you are married. And then next is the appraised value of the property. So for house and lot, construction loan, you can loan up to 80% of the appraised value or 80% of the bill of materials. For house and lot and condominiums, you can loan 70% up to 70% of the appraised value. So let's say the bank has appraised your capacity to pay and your approved loan amount is below the amount that you need. Can you increase your loanable amount? Yes, you can. You can do this by getting a co-borrower, which should be a first degree relative, like your parents or siblings. For instance, if your income is 70,000 per month and you need 100,000 per month to get the property that you want, you will need to look for a co-borrower with at least 30,000 per month in income so that your total income would then amount 
to 100,000 per month. The co-borrower will also be taking on the loan with you. So it's also a commitment in on their part. So you have to make sure that, you know, it's someone that you trust and someone who's also willing to shoulder that commitment with you. Next is with Pag-ibig Financing, members are allowed to take up multiple loans up to 6 million. So 6 million is the maximum loanable amount for Pag-ibig. So this is also subject to certain conditions, which is very similar to the bank conditions, but with slight difference. First is age of borrower. So age of maturity for Pag-ibig is 70 years old. So Pag-ibig has a higher age of maturity compared to bank financing. Next is gross monthly income. Again, they will check the income of both spouses if married. And then of course, same with the bank, appraised value of the property. So for house and lot construction loan, that's 80% of the appraised value. Condos, for condos and lot only, that's up to 70% of appraised value. So the main differences between the loanable amount is that Pag-ibig only has a maximum of 6 million for its loanable amount, whereas the bank doesn't really have a maximum amount. You can loan as much as you want as long as you satisfy the three conditions of the bank, which is the appraised value, the age, and the income. Another difference between bank and Pag-ibig is the co-borrower. You can get a co-borrower for both the bank and Pag-ibig to increase your loanable amount. But with a bank, your co-borrower has to be a first-degree relative, you know, like siblings or parents. Whereas with Pag-ibig, it can be anyone as long as he or she is also a Pag-ibig member. So you can really see that the banks are more strict compared to Pag-ibig when it comes to, you know, getting a co-borrower or even with the age. By allowing only a first-degree relative to be a co-borrower, banks minimize the risk of the loan default because, you know, you can't really change your family members. For example, we had two clients who reserved a house. They were planning to buy it via Pag-ibig financing with each other as co-borrowers. Now, they were not related. They were actually boyfriend and girlfriend. Now, after a year of paying for the equity, we found out that they had broken up and only the guy would be continuing with the purchase. Now, it was okay on their part because the guy's income was more than capable of shouldering for the loan amount. But what if it was not? So he would have needed to get another co-borrower so that's the problem if it's not if your co-borrower is not first of kin because you don't know what will happen and real estate is a long-term investment buying a home or getting a house using home loan is the easiest way to become a homeowner but as with all major financial decisions, this needs to be thought over as well since investing in a property is a long-term choice. So you can use this table, I'll show it here on the right. You can use this table on the differences between bank and Pag-ibig financing to weigh your options and then decide which type of financing is best for you. So I hope I was able to add value for you today. If you have any questions with regards to Pag-ibig or bank financing, then just let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer you and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.